I know that getting your players to understand spreading out and finding open space is one of the big challenges in dealing with young players. So this is just a quick session that I would do to kind of teach the concept of open space and start to apply it gradually to the game. So if you're fortunate enough to train on a field uh, that you can use the lines for it, it's great. Then I would do this a warm-up activity in half of a field. If not, then marking out the field and letting the players know kind of where things are uh, in terms of, you know, this is a ha you know, half of a field and letting them know that'll help them kind of gain a reference for it. So anyway, everybody's got a ball. If you have 10 players, as I have here, you can do this. You could split this into two groups of five or two groups of seven, just depending on how many players you're dealing with at training. Uh, I would try to keep the groups as small as you can manage if you have help. So if you've got you know two coaches that are working together, uh, then this is great. So have the players dribble around inside the space. And then I like to stop them by saying, stop, stand still. It's an easy way. A freeze sometimes gets their attention well, sometimes not. I've always liked stop, stand still because it tells them what to do. Stop, stand still, and then have them look around and say, okay, is there any space in here? No, there's no space. So then you say, okay, where is the open space? And the players will point to the open space and they'll say there's space over here and there's space here, and there's space here. Say, okay, now dribble to the open space. So now you want the players to move with their ball into the open space and try to spread out and find that space. And you'll you know, kind of do that a few times as the players go along, each time stopping uh, if you see that there's a bunch of players, you know, perhaps there's still a bunch of players over here and you've got some players that are understanding it and spreading out and you'll say, stop, stand still. And the players will then look around again. You'll say, where's the open space? And they'll say, oh, here, there's open space here. So now can you dribble your ball over here, Molly or whomever and dribble into that space? And so you're just teaching the idea of space. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would do is take a ball away from one of these players and make that player a defender. So now we're gonna teach the idea of pressure. So we wanna go away from the pressure, this player, and into the open space. If players bunch up together, you can tell the defender, hey, find players that are in bunches. And so that'll be uh, a way to encourage the dribblers to find open space and, and be away from the pressure is having these players then split up and try to find their own open space so they can't be uh, you know, tackled by the defender. Depending on the number of players you have, depending on how quickly they get this, you can multiply that and have two defenders and multiple pressure, you know, coming from different players in different spaces. I always make the no double teaming rule, I think is a good idea. If this is too much for your players, then perhaps saying, okay, this defender has to hop on one foot. Or with very young players, this is a crab defender that has to crawl on their feet and their hands and try to go from one player to the next and tackle. Just trying to limit the pressure to whatever the players can handle. So that's the first thing, kind of a warm-up activity. You add the defender to that. Now, the next thing I would do is create a keep-away game. Now, ideally, this keep-away game would be with no more than four players and one defender at the most one defender. You could even do this keep away activity with just the players in the ball to begin with. And just the idea of keeping them in your shape. So if you play a diamond, you know, having the players stay in a shape like this and pass the ball from one player to the next would be a starting point. If you can introduce the defender, you know, then that's obviously the next step. If you uh, want to limit the space, obviously you don't want to give them unlimited space to do this. So you know, perhaps you put, you know, cones down here, um, you multiply those real quick. And so now you've got cones that are kind of setting the space for the player. So they know they can't just go, just go anywhere and everywhere around the field. So they've got to keep the ball inside this area while trying to keep it away from this player. Now that's a pretty advanced activity. Um, what I would suggest doing, if you've got five players that are capable of this, split them off and have them do this you know, with yourself or with an assistant coach. If you have some players that are having a bit more trouble with that and you need to, you know, perhaps just do it with, with uh, no pressuring player at all, then, you know, put those players together. So now you're letting the players kind of train at the level that they're able to understand. And without overwhelming any one player, you're giving everybody a chance to figure it out kind of at their own speed. So, you know, that would be the next thing, would be something kind of a keep away type game. Now, the, the final thing that I would do before I allowed the players to just have a scrimmage here at the end of the practice is I would do 
basically rolling it back to the goalkeeper and we'll just we'll put a goalkeeper down here and by adding a goalkeeper here or we'll do it at this end just easier by adding a goalkeeper now you as the coach will roll a ball to the goalkeeper and you'll have the players open up in the space that they're playing the position that they're playing in so let's imagine here we'll take these cones away and you'll have four players to begin with so you've got these four players have them start maybe at the halfway line or at some kind of central point and when I'm first teaching this I'll give the players cones as reference points to say here's where I want you to go so when the goalkeeper gets the ball, let's say that we're playing, we'll stick with the diamond. So if we're playing a diamond and our goalkeeper gets the ball, then here's where I want our players to end up. All right, I want them to end up in those spaces. Just clean this up just so it's easier to see. And you would be, as the coach, perhaps uh, out here. We'll go ahead and multiply that player. We'll make you the coach. And if you have a ball, then you're able to roll the ball in to the goalkeeper and then you're going to ask the players to spread out and go to those spots. So you're going to play the ball from yourself back to your goalkeeper and you want the players to open up into the correct positions. We'll just flip this player around and find their space. So what you've done then is you've shown them where you want them to go. And then the goalkeeper will pass the ball out and you'll have this player, you know, pass it out to this player and this player will pass it up here. If you have a goal that you could use out here, that'd be fantastic. Even if you don't have a regular, you know, goal to work with, you can always just add two cones and create a goal so that you have the opportunity for these players to then build up with their passing and dribbling and then score a goal. That's a great way to teach them then the idea of opening up after the goalkeeper gets the ball, because that's a really common scenario, whether the goalkeeper catches it in their hands or it goes out for a goal kick, is having all the players open up, find their space, find their position, and then the goalkeeper rolls it out to one player or another. You let the goalkeeper decide that, and then we can make passes that lead us up the field to eventually score. Now, that's a way of teaching them where you want them to go in terms of the space on the field. The next step, obviously, would be to introduce a defender to that. So when the ball is played in, everybody's here. In the middle again, the ball is played into the goalkeeper. Everybody spreads out into their spaces. And when then the, uh, the defender can come in and try to wreck it is usually the, the way I phrase it with young kids. You know, your job is to wreck it. They're, these players' job is to see if they can still score, pass the goalkeeper, and get in there. If you get to the point where one is easy, you go with a second one, and so on. And then you could end this with a scrimmage at the end. And by playing a scrimmage at the end, now you get a chance to repeat the things that you've talked about during the session. You get a chance to repeat uh, the idea of finding open space. So where's the open space? You can ask the players uh, to stop, stand still during the scrimmage and say, okay, where's the open space? So if you have two teams now, I'll just lay this out and you've got two teams playing and I suggest that you play the format or you practice in the, the scrimmage, the format that you're going to play in the game. Just because you have, you know, 12 kids doesn't mean you should play 6v6 for the end just to try to involve everybody. It's much better for the kids to play the number that you have on the field and have substitutes and have the subs on the side be watching and say, okay, tell me if they get bunched up and tell me who gets bunched up and, and have them be actively participating even though they're off to the side because then that allows the players on the field to play the game as they're going to play it on the weekend. So you'll see a better transfer of training from your practice into your game if you finish with an actual match under those same conditions. So when things get all bunched up again, then you can stop and stand still. And if your attacking team did a great job of staying spread out, you can you know, say to Bobby, okay, Bobby, now who's open? Who's in the open space? Okay, Tommy's in the open space. All right, well, we'll pass to Tommy on the outside here. So those are all ideas of how you can go from a basic warm-up, talking about space, building it up with pressure, and then finishing with a game at the end that will teach the players how to better understand pressure. Now, I don't pretend that this is going to work in one session and the next game you come to and magically everybody's spread out, but it's an introduction to the topic and an introduction to the concept of spreading out, and hopefully it'll help the players gradually understand it better and improve from one game to the next.